1.5 reads, which statement is correct for a system in dynamic equilibrium? And the correct answer there is option D, the concentration of the reactants and products remains constant. Option A is incorrect because that is the definition for a static equilibrium when the reactants are used up and the reaction stops. Option B, we often make this mistake where we think that it's the forward reaction that's equal to the reverse reaction, where in fact it is the rate of the forward reaction that must equal the reverse reaction, which is why that is incorrect. And option C, we often also confuse the idea that the concentrations must be equal with the idea that the concentrations must be constant. And the correct answer is with constant concentrations, and so C is also incorrect. Question 1.6. Initially, a certain amount of P was placed in an empty container. The hypothetical reaction reaches equilibrium in a closed container according to the following balanced equation. As we can see, the forward reaction here has a negative enthalpy change, which means that the forward reaction is exothermic. At time T, the temperature is increased, which graph below shows best illustrates the resulting changes in the rates of the forward and reverse reactions after the temperature is increased. So we can see that all these graphs start in the same way, where the forward reaction is represented by the dotted line and it starts out at a high rate and then slowly decreases until the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse are constant. And that is then at equilibrium until time T. Now we know that when the temperature is increased, the initial reaction is going to be that both rates increase, which means that options B, C, and D are all in the correct line because all of them show that both rates increase initially. But then Le Chatelier's principle says that we are going to favor the direction that undoes or tries to oppose the change that was made. So by increasing the temperature, Le Chatelier's principle is going to try to decrease the temperature by favoring the endothermic direction, the endothermic direction being the reverse reaction, which means that the rate of the reverse reaction is going to increase more than the rate of the forward reaction. That only is for a brief period of time until both of them establish or re-establish equilibrium. And so graph B is the correct graph because it correctly shows the initial reaction that increasing temperature increases both rates and the long-term Le Chatelier reaction, which shows that the endothermic reaction being the reverse reaction is favored because we are trying to counter the increase in temperature. Question six reads, dinitrogen tetraoxide decomposes to nitrogen dioxide in a sealed syringe of volume two cubic decimeters. The mixture reaches equilibrium at 325 degrees Celsius according to the following balanced equation. When equilibrium is reached, it is observed that the color of the gas in the syringe is brown, where we can see that the color of N2O4 is colorless and the NO2 is brown. So what they're saying is that at equilibrium, there is more NO2 in the solution. Question 6.1, state Le Chatelier's principle. And according to the guideline document, Le Chatelier's principle is stated as follows. When the equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed, the system will reinstate a new equilibrium by favoring the reaction that will oppose the disturbance. 6.2, the syringe is now dipped into a beaker of ice water. After a while, the brown color disappears. Is the forward reaction exo or endothermic? Explain your answer using the Chatelier's principle. So the first thing for us to notice here at 6.2 is that when the syringe is dipped into ice water, it favors the reverse reaction. The reason we know it favors the reverse reaction is because the syringe turns colorless, which means that there is now less brown gas, less of our product, and more of our reactant. So our starting point here is that we say that the reverse reaction is favored.
once we've stated that the reverse reaction is favored, the next thing for us to see here is that if we were to try to cool the solution down, which is what we have done here by dipping it in ice water, normally when we try to cool something down, Le Chatelier's principle would try to counter or oppose that change. Therefore, this reaction is going to favor the exothermic direction. And so we can say here that we also know by Le Chatelier's principle that the exothermic reaction is going to be favored. And then finally, we have our answer that the forward reaction, excuse me, the reverse reaction is the exothermic reaction because as we've said here, the reverse reaction was favored by Le Chatelier's principle. The exothermic reaction is going to be favored when we try to cool the reaction down. And therefore, we can say that the reverse reaction is exothermic and the forward reaction therefore must be endothermic. Question 6.3, the volume of the syringe is now decreased while the temperature is kept constant. How will each of the following be affected? Choose increases, decreases, or remains the same. Important to note here, the statement that temperature is kept constant because what that means is that our Kc value will remain the same because Kc is constant at a specific temperature. 6.3.1 asks how this change is going to affect the number of moles of N2O4. And as we can see, when the volume of this container is decreased, the reaction is going to favor the direction that produces fewer moles. And what we can see here in the balanced equation, we can see that one mole of N2O4 decomposes into two moles of NO2. And so what this says is that the products produce two moles of substance for every one mole of reactants. And so when there's less space available, which is said to us now that the volume is decreased, since there's less space available, the reaction is going to favor the direction that produces fewer moles, that being the reverse reaction. The reverse reaction is therefore going to decrease the amount of NO2 and increase the amount of N2O4. And so 6.3.1 has asked how it affects the number of moles of N2O4 and the number of moles of N2O4 increases. 6.3.2 asks how the value of the equilibrium constant is affected. And that question is easily answered because we have been told that the temperature is kept constant. And since the temperature is kept constant, the value of Kc remains the same. We remember that the only factor that can affect our equilibrium constant is temperature. And so as long as the temperature is kept constant, Kc remains the same. And then finally, 6.3.3 the rate of the forward and reverse reactions. And so what we can see in this reaction is that since the volume has decreased, the pressure in the system has increased. By increasing the pressure in the system, we've increased the number of collisions, therefore the number of effective collisions, and therefore we would have increased the rate of both reactions. So the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse reactions will have increased. 6.4 asks, initially X moles of N204 were placed in the syringe of volume two cubic decimeters. When the equilibrium was reached, it was found that 20% of the N204 had decomposed. If the equilibrium constant Kc for the reaction is 0 0.16 at 325 degrees Celsius, calculate the value of X. Now there are a number of ways to solve this problem, but the easiest way, as far as I'm concerned, is using what we call either a Shrek or a Rice table, where we set it up as follows. We write down the balanced equation as it is given to us. We then start by filling in the starting amounts of each substance. So we're told that there are X moles of N2O4 added to this syringe in the beginning, and there's also no mention made of any NO2 that is added, and so we can say that there are zero moles of NO2 added. We're then told 
that 20% of that X moles then reacts, which means that the change in N2O4 is going to be minus 0 0.2 times X, that is 20% of that X value. What we can then see is because N2O4 reacts in a ratio of 1 to 2 to NO2, that if we use up 0 0.2 times X of N2O4, we must produce double that, therefore 0 0.4 times X moles of NO2. What that tells us is that at equilibrium, we will have X minus 0 0.2 moles of X, which we can just write as 0 0.8 X moles present, and we would have 0 plus 0.4 X, which would then just be simply 0.4 X. And then to find our equilibrium concentration, we remember that this container has the volume of two cubic decimeters, and we calculate concentration by taking the number of moles and dividing it by the volume. So at equilibrium, our concentration of N2O4 is 0.4x, and our concentration of NO2 is 0.2x. What we now have is we have two expressions in terms of x, and now we can use the second bit of information that was given to us, and that is the value for Kc at equilibrium. And so we write out our Kc expression. Kc is equal to our concentration of the products, you know, two to the power of their, exp their coefficients, in, and that is two, and that is divided by the concentration of the reactants, the concentration of N2O4. And so we can say that the given Kc value is 0 0.16, and that is then equal to 0.2x, with that being squared over 0.4x. And then we can solve for our unknown x to find that is 1.6, and that is an initial quantity, and that is our number of moles. The way that this is marked, the definition for Le Chatelier's principle, as you can see, the underlined segments are the segments that must be present in order for the marks to be awarded. And so when the equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed, the system will reinstate a new equilibrium, that is for the first mark, by favoring the reaction that will oppose the disturbance, and that is for the second mark. Question 6.2. We are asked, is the forward reaction exo endothermic? And to explain that, so there is one mark for your essentially your final answer saying that the forward reaction is endothermic. One mark for explaining that we can see that the reverse reaction is favored because the syringe turns colorless or the gas turns colorless. And then one mark for drawing the link between uh, using the Chatelier's principle that shows that that must be the exothermic reaction that is favored because the system is cooled down. So 6.3.1 and 3.2 and 3.3, each of them for one mark for the correct statement increases, remains the same and increases. The Shrek or Rice table, uh, the marks are allocated for specific functions in this table. So the first mark here, is allocated for showing that you understand that when they say 20% reacts, that means 0 0.2 times X is used. The second mark is for making use of the ratio in which they react to see that twice as much NO2 is formed as the amount of N2O4 that reacts. What we then find is that there is a mark for finding the equilibrium amounts of each substance a mark then for converting those equilibrium amounts into equilibrium concentrations, and then one mark for correctly stating our expression for Kc for this reaction, one mark for our substitution of the value for Kc and the values that we've calculated from our Shrek table, and then our final mark there for finding the correct answer.